the Designator TRX-40. It's got something special. You're watching this because it looks like it has a Thunderbolt, right? No, the packaging and the advertising material and everything else is extremely careful not to refer to anything as Thunderbolt. So if you've got a, if you're a lawyer or a lawyer degree or looking for somebody that's like, man, they said that this thing is called Thunderbolt. It's not. It is maybe perhaps Thunderbolt compatible. That's something we're gonna determine in this video, but I have taken it upon myself in order to explore the Thunderbolt compatibility on my own. And Gigabyte bears no responsibility whatsoever for anything even remotely related to anything that may or may not resemble Thunderbolt. Legal disclaimers aside, that's probably one of the most exciting aspects of this motherboard is that it has a USB-C type connection with the Gigabyte Titan Ridge add-in controller. And uh, yeah, this is a Threadripper. This motherboard is a monster, chunky TRX-40 motherboard. It is a 16 plus three direct drive phase VRM solution that's 70 amp power stages. This is very similar to the uh, Aorus Extreme, which is the other TRX-40 motherboard from Gigabyte that I've reviewed so far. I'm still hoping to get my hands on one of the not $900 motherboards, TRX-40 motherboards, but this one was only $650 on Newegg, so not too bad, really. It has four PCI Express 4.0 by 16 slots electrically. That's by 16 by 8 by 16 by 8. It also has four NVMe slots right on the motherboard, and it also comes with an add-in card, a number of add-in cards, as a matter of fact. At the rear I.O., we've got the Q-Flash button which will let you flash the BIOS on this motherboard from USB as well as a clear CMOS button just in case you need to clear the CMOS because the system won't post. If for some reason you buy a system a CPU and motherboard and it won't post I would recommend using the BIOS flashback button to just flash a fresh copy of the BIOS on the motherboard because sometimes weird stuff happens and that's a if you find yourself in the unfortunate position of your machine not posting and you seem like you've ruled everything else out, RAM, power supply, all the other stuff that might prevent it from posting, and you're getting uh, post codes on the readout, let's say on the, on the, on the motherboard, it gets stuck, but NumLock doesn't work, you don't get any, any video output and you're sure it's not the video card, maybe try reflashing the BIOS with the latest version of the BIOS. We've also got two USB 2.0 ports. These are useful for things like mice and keyboards. And then we've got six USB ports. These are a mix of five and 10 gigabit USB with one type C. We've got our dual antenna solution, connection, whatever you want to call it for our Intel Wi-Fi 6 adapter. And we've got dual Intel gigabit LAN. Now I would have liked to have seen 10 gig on this motherboard, but given the feature set and cost, not having 10 gig on this motherboard was done for cost considerations, even though this is a high end premium board, but you can add 10 gig back through a PCI Express adapter. The audio implementation on this motherboard is the Realtek ALC1220VB. This is a higher end implementation and that is implemented through a USB controller, the ALC4050H. Well, it's a USB interface because that's just how it works with the TRX40. Also, this form factor, like the Aorus Extreme, XL ATX. So if you're doing a build with this motherboard, you're gonna wanna make sure that you've got the XL ATX case or that your case is XL ATX ready. It's extra long. What else do you get in the box? Well, first, you get the Gigabyte Titan Ridge add-in controller. This is a PCI Express by four interface. It has two mini DisplayPort in, two PCIe over USB-C interfaces that are apparently Thunderbolt compatible after you jump through some software configuration steps that you as a user assume the entire responsibility for. We also have dual six pin power connections. Now you may be wondering, uh, dual six pin power connections? This is so you can run a VR headset, 75 watts off of your USB-C connection or charge a laptop. We've got the multilingual installation guide and we've also got the designator manual and installation CD, which contains some utilities, an electronic version of the manual, which you can also download. But most importantly, the block diagram, which is also online on Gigabyte's website in a PDF document. So you can plan your peripheral expansion, this sort of thing. Two M.2 sockets directly into the CPU. Two M.2 sockets are through the chipset, which is a PCI Express by eight interface to the CPU, which I think is one of the best design decisions that AMD has done. Finally, 
we have the chipset PCI Express 4.0 by 8 from the chipset to the CPU, no bottlenecks, at least not with any current peripherals and probably not for the next two generations of peripherals. Then all the USB-C accoutrement connected through there as well. We've got uh, four USB 3.2 Gen 2 connections directly into the CPU. And then our chipset also has, you know, our eight front SATA connections here at the right angle. Dual USB 30 pin at the bottom, two USB 2.0 headers. This motherboard has ample USB, even if you have to break it out into the extra headers. We also have a USB Type-C connection for the front panel on your case. CPU power input, dual eight pin. Also at the dual eight pin power connections, we've got four four pin CPU fan headers and external temperature input. I mentioned the 16 plus three VRM, but the cooling solution here is also top notch. Gigabyte is really going all out these days with their VRM implementation. So this dual fin stack is connected together via heat pipe. This is plenty of cooling, even if you're gonna overclock, you know, the, the monster 64 core Threadripper CPU that's looming on the horizon. This motherboard's gonna be more than adequate. But surely that's not everything in the box, is it? No, you get the four card. You can turn this into a monster X16 NVMe. This is a PCI Express by four add-in card that has four M.2 slots in it. This is exactly the same card that we saw in the uh, Aorus Extreme video where uh, we were taking a look at NVMe RAID. I've actually got some breakout cables on mine that run to some Intel two and a half inch NVMe drives. It's not a problem. This is an interface that's by 16. If you do decide to do this, use this card, do not forget to set your PCIe bifurcation and your BIOS to X4, 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 X4. That'll turn one of your X16 slots into a four by four. Also in the box, you've got everything you would need in terms of USB connectivity, SATA connectivity. There's even a USB header extension to get your analog temperature sensors. And you also have short mini DP to DP cables. What, why is that? Why is that in the box? You can go from your video card, out from your video card, in to your Titan Ridge add-in controller, and then you will have full display port on your PCIe over USB-C with display port connections your Thunderbolt-like interface. It's, it's Thunderbolt-like. Well, for the purposes of copyright being substantially different. Now, one cable in particular that you will need for your Thunderbolt hookup is the interface. This is really just like, if you follow the, the threads on the level one forum, it's pretty easy to hack the bananas out of these cards. I mean, I got this working, I get Alpine Ridge working on first gen Threadripper. It's not magical. It's there's not really much to it. It's PCI Express over USB-C. I mean, the hardware does most of the magic. What the software does is provide you a little security so that any device just willy-nilly can't read memory because we had that problem with Firewire and that, that was a bad time. So what this little cable does is provide a secondary communication channel that's really just on or off. So when you have reset type events or, or other special events that happen, you gotta plug this in so that You've got that communication channel. And this is a this is a USB header to USB header cable. You're going to need that as well to hook up to your Titan Ridge controller. And those are those are on the edges here. That USB interface again, secondary communication channel plugs right into the header on the motherboard. You might need it depending on what device that you're using for testing and qualification. Now, if there's anybody in the audience that wants to loan me some of their high-end pro audio gear or like a Thunderbolt audio interface and knows a little bit about it. I will be glad to test this system for you and see how this works with a pro audio interface. So, what's the performance? How does this motherboard stack up against other motherboards? Well, first off, you would have to be a complete idiot if you think that one motherboard is gonna perform vastly different from another motherboard just in terms of like raw CPU performance. They're not. Well, if they are, then the reviewer is gonna harp on that for like, the entire review. Otherwise, it's just like, yeah, it performs as expected. This motherboard, the 32 core, that's what I've got in there now. And I've also got the Arctic FR50, which is, uh, or TR50, sorry, it's, that's gonna come in a separate review. But this is a very competent tower cooler that really the only thing to complain about is the RAM clearance, because it's not gonna clear any fancy RAM. I've got some Kingston Fury RAM in there right now. I tried it with 2933 and 3600, the G-Skill kit and the Corsair Dominator kit. Right now, the Corsair Dominator kit is my favorite just because it's CL16, but 64 gigabyte kit, four sticks, 16 gigs. <sighs> Testing these things is a huge pain. 16 plus three VRM phase implementation. The VRM implementation 
does vary the most from TRX40 motherboard to TRX40 motherboard, depending on who the AIB partner is. Gigabyte has settled on a really solid design, the 16 plus three design. We looked at that in the Oris Master. It's back again, more or less, on the Designair TRX40. Some component changes, but the short version is that even with a massive 400 watt overclock, this motherboard is going to deliver ample clean power to your 32 core 3000 series Threadripper per CPU and presumably the 64 core because 64 core is also going to be 280 watts just bend for uh, very low power like we saw with the 3950X. I mean the 3950X on AM4 that thing was rocking less than one volt uh, around four gigahertz which is just the best of the best chiplets in terms of voltage. So I've rambled about that for a long time, but some people were super confused about that on the last TRX40 motherboards. My heart, I mean, it's solid performance. I've also flipped the motherboard upside down, in this case, because the dark base lets you do that, but you get more of a wind tunnel effect. Oh, he's just making up things now, don't listen to him. <laughs> you get the charger in the top and all this kind of stuff. I've had this case for a while, just swapping systems around and that kind of thing. Uh, for the bench testing, we use the same cooler, which is the custom loop insanity um, that we did with the other thing. Overall, the CPU performance on this motherboard was in within one to two percent of all of our other motherboards. The thing to do when you're testing is to set your turn off spread spectrum because that can negatively impact your scores. Although it's good to have that on for radio frequency interference, FCC thing if you're in that jurisdiction, but set mine to 100 megahertz. You can claw back any of these performance deltas by setting your FSB to 101 megahertz. Generally, I don't recommend that, but if you're like, no, it must have the best numbers, you set your FSB speed to 100 megahertz or 100.5 megahertz and get back the performance. Thunderbolt, thunder, 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 bolt. Yes, I mean, I think even Lionel would approve of that. It works, but you should know that Thunderbolt in general right now, even on the Intel platform, it's not in a good spot. And the reason for that is the Windows 10 transition from uh, legacy drivers, as Microsoft is calling them, to DCH drivers, like the old way and the new way. DCH, Thunderbolt drivers, are basically a dumpster fire. They don't work on anything, even on Intel platforms, except for about like three laptops. And when you go to the Windows store and you search for Thunderbolt control software, it's like, hey, let me install the DCH version. It's almost like a virus. So once you get the DCH stuff on there, it's kind of on there, but it kind of doesn't work. And it's basically impossible to remove. I wrote a guide for that. It's on the level one forum. You're gonna need that. There's gonna be a separate video just on Thunderbolt compatibility on the TRX40 platform. It's here in the box on the Designair TRX40. That's one of the reasons why you would buy this board. It comes with the Gigabyte Titan Ridge controller in the box. Same controller, tried it on the Aorus Master. Remember the Antec Torque case? Works fine there as well. When you install that add-in card, you get some new options in the BIOS that will help you in case you're having Thunderbolt troubleshooting issues, you can toggle some stuff on, get a little bit more mileage out of Thunderbolt compatibility. Technically, Thunderbolt require like to call it Thunderbolt, we gotta call it, you know, the whole Intel certification, like I was saying before, this is really Thunderbolt compatible. This is not sanctioned by Intel, but it works and looks a lot like Thunderbolt. It's Thunderbolt compatibility. In a nutshell, you can do it. Check the guide on the level one forum. But this is my build, my TRX40, 32 core designator, another 32 core threader. What is he doing with all these thread rippers? Well, you can support us. You can be a patron and see some of the mad science that we're up to. The level one Patreon, we're also on float plane now. It's the audience support that powers this mad science and for that I am very thankful, so thank you. And this has been a level one look at the Designair TRX40, which by the way I bought, it's fine, on uh, Newegg, because it was on Newegg. Also the 32 core, it's a retail 32 core. No, no, not selling the computer or anything like that. I just get sucked into things, it's that time of year. The designator has my seal of approval. The only thing that I could have possibly wanted was 10 gig, 10 gig ethernet. If I could trade the add-in card for 10 gig ethernet, probably not, because the add-in card for, uh, you know, RAID, NVMe RAID is probably cheaper. I would have loved to have seen 10 gig on this board. And what this is level one, this has been a quick look at the TRX40 designator. Yes, it's got the performance chops. Yes, it's got the overclocking chops. Yes, the performance is the same as our launch day coverage. Those graphs are pretty, aren't they? They're the same graphs. 
that we had in the other thing. We've done the testing. There's nothing performance-wise wrong with this motherboard. It's great. I'm going on too long. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out, I'll see you later. This motherboard is basically the Aorus Extreme without the dual 10 gig Intel NYX. It is basically the, the pretty much more or less the same board. So if you want the even more high-end designator, get the Aorus Extreme, get the Thunderbolt add-in card, you're good to go.